So what if we wanted to use templates to do a Christmas ladder? So I'm just going to put this in temp 03 Christmas. And I'm sure I just annoyed a lot of people because it should be Christ Mass. So I'm all into not wanting to make people mad. And uh, first I'm going to need a main.go file. So there's my main.go file. Do you want to add the following file to get? Remember, don't ask me again, yes. And package 03, whatever. I'm just going to call it main. Okay. Yeah. The code right there? No, it's not the code. I'm trying to figure out where you're putting it. I'm just putting it in a folder temp. So let's just code this together and then we'll come back to it or whatever. We'll do whatever's next. So, next thing I need is I'm going to have some sort of a template, right? So, it's just going to be a text file. It could be letter.php AS, ASP CFM. PHP ASP. I'm just going to do letter.php ASP because it could be anything, right? And it's just text. So, WebStorm quit. See? Introduce PHP and everything just starts going to hell. WebStorm completely protested. Uh, that's not what I want. Where's WebStorm? Okay, I have WebStorm back up. You guys are creating those files. Is that what's happening? Yeah? I assume so. So now, you know, here's my letter and here's main. So I have my package main. I'm going to need a func main. And so my func main is the entry point for my code. And the first thing I need to do is I need to parse my templates. So maybe I don't totally remember how I'm supposed to do that. But I remember Todd went to some place at godoc.org, had something to do with templates. And so I searched for template. Oh, yeah, that's right, text template. So I'm going to do text template. And then Todd said go to the index. I go to the index, and then, oh, this looks familiar. Parse files gives me a template and an error. All right, so I want to use parse files, and it's going to give me a template and an error. So my template and an error is what's returned from, and it's template.parse files. And, uh, and then parse files once, just strings. And so the file I'm going to parse is uh, the name of it, letter.phpasp. All right, template parse files. And then I need to do error checking if error is not equal to nil. Then we could just do uh, format print line. And there was an error parsing file. And I could put that error there. That TBL is underlined because I haven't used it yet. What am I supposed to do next? Who can tell me? What have I done so far? So what's line 9 do? What's line 9 do? What's the, it creates a template. Oh, it links the template yeah. to the, to the um, PHPASP file. So line 9, if I was to read line 9, I would say from package template, we're calling the parse files function. 
the parse files function takes an unlimited number of arguments. So it has a variadic parameter. The variadic parameter can be one, no strings, one string, or n number of strings. And when I call function parse files from package template, it returns a pointer to a template, a value of type pointer to a template, and an error. So I am assigning, I'm calling this function, it will return a value of type pointer to a template and an error. So I'm assigning those here. I'm now checking the error. The value type pointer to a template is like a container. It's like a bucket into which all of the templates I've asked to parse, you know, and parse just basically means go read them and get them ready to use, have them in your work and memory. It's, they're all stored in template. What I do with that now, I come back here, and since it gave me a pointer to a template, I have all of these methods right here to call from. And that's right, if I want to write it somewhere, I need to execute it. I could either execute or execute template. So if I execute, I don't specify the template name, but if I execute template, I have to specify the template name. And so there's only one template in this bucket. I don't, I don't need to specify the name. It'll just choose the one that's in there. So I'm just going to do TPL, execute template, and it's asking for a writer. And, uh, and what else does it ask for? It asks for a uh, writer and data, and it returns an error. So I should probably catch that error. Template, execute template, and it wants a writer, OS standard out, and uh, I'm not going to pass in any data, and I'm just going to check that error again. If error is not equal to nil, Format.println, there was an error executing template. And uh, I, I, I did execute template. I'm just going to do execute because otherwise I need to give it the name. I'm not giving it the name. And it's telling me that I've already declared error, so don't declare it again. So I'm getting a little red underline there. No new variables on left side of colon equal. So I'm just going to use equal because error was already declared up here. I'm just reassigning a new value to it here. And so that should print to standard out my letter. My letter currently has, it's a text letter, my letter currently has nothing in it, but now I could write Merry Christmas name can go here, or whatever, right? And uh, I hope the holiday season finds you well. So now, that's pretty much ready to run. Let's see what happens. And uh, I'm just going to change directories up a level. Remove recursively with force CIT90 because I'm not using that and change into Golang Web Dev, change into OO and O3 and go run main. There was an error parsing file template, function name not defined. Uh, so since I said it's it's asking for uh, HTML template. I want to do text template. Let's see if that fixes anything. And still function name not defined. So it's asking for data. It's interpreting that as data. So I just need to take out one of the curly braces because I'm not passing data yet. There we go. Now it's no longer interpreting that as some data it needs to execute. But it's parsed my template and printed it out to standard out. I'll split this vertically so you could take a look at that and bring it over.
So Nina asked, you know, hey, we're checking there here. Why check there again here? Yeah, and one of the ways that you can do error checking is with try catch, like in Java. And in Go, they said, hey, you know, let's just have anything that could potentially throw an error, return an error. And then you could have those errors, like if you have a function calling a function calling a function, and that function, like way down the line, throws an error, it could just continue to be passed up until whatever originally called it catches it and then checks it. And you just check it right wherever it was. And you do whatever you response you want right next to wherever it occurred. So Go tries to keep things close to each other. You know, so. So anytime you do anything, you pull that error in there. Yeah, and so some people are like, wow, that's a lot of junk code filling in, taking up space. And so there's ways you could abstract that out and make it a little leaner. But, you know, air, che air checking is, uh, you know, something you need. And it makes sense to do it every time you do something. It's kind of like, that's the way we live. I say something and I'm always air checking myself. And sometimes, you know, I say the wrong word, and I'm like, uh, you know, and I'm correcting it right then, you know, so whatever you do, you should always be air checking okay. right after you do it, each thing. So now I want you to take the file that you created, and I want you to pass in a name. And you'll do that right here, double quotes. You could use double quotes or you could use back ticks for a string. So I'm just going to use double quotes and I'm going to use, we have Connor, we have Alex. I'm going to use Alex. And then right here, I'm just going to do double curlies, dot double curlies. Okay. And then I'm going to run my code again. And Merry Christmas, Alex. So I want you to add that in and just have that work. Okay, so you can take a look at how I did that there. So for the next step, I'm going to do this. So instead of just Alex, right, I'm going to uh, do friends are equal to so I'm creating a variable friends. So tune in. Whatever you're doing, just pause for a second so you could check this out. And I'm going to do a slice of string. Okay, so it's going to be a slice of strings. I could have also done a slice of int or a slice of any type. And a slice is kind of how we keep a whole bunch of stuff in a list. So basically an array. Yeah, yeah, slices are built on top of arrays, so kind of like an array. And now I'm going to do, you know, Alex and Connor and uh, Ken and Ronnie and Patrick and uh, I'll come back to you, Nina. It's getting late. And Jeremy, and somehow I see I jumped out of my line. I'm going to pause this video while I do this so you don't have to listen to me hum and hum. Now I've got all the names there. And instead of passing in Alex, I'm going to pass in my slice. Friends. But check this out. I'll let you guys want, let me just show you this whole piece and then you could do the coding. Ready? So watch. I am now, whenever I pass in data, that data is like kind of pretty much the dot. Okay. I am now going to range over my data. And when I range over something, I just say when the range ends, it ends right there. Okay. And so I'll just start each one with an extra space on each side. Or I will put these. All right. So I'm going to range over my data. So I'm passing in friends. So for each friend that comes in, I'm going to loop here. And each time through the loop, whatever is the current piece of data gets put there. So this is kind of like pipeline. 
the output of one thing becomes the input of the next thing. So what this dot refers to right here is this data structure. And as I loop over this, the output of this loop each time through the loop becomes each item in the data structure, which is here. So let's watch this run. Cool, huh? Yeah. So now all I'd have to do is send those to a file and print them or something. And I'm doing mail merge. Or I'm creating web pages. Or I'm spamming. But I just have to say where it's being directed to. Where is that output being directed to? So uh, modify your stuff to do that. So what is, what is range? How would we learn more about range? We could go to Godoc. And we could search for a template. And we could go to text template. And then we could scroll down here and we could start reading this stuff. Right? And they have different examples here. And actions. But here's a range. And they have this concept of pipeline, which they talk about. And the value of the pipeline must be an array, slice, map, or channel. So we are using a slice. If the value has length 0, nothing's output, dot is set to the successive elements of the, of the array. Right? So the otherwise dot is set to the successive elements of the array. We could also do range, else, end. So if there's nothing to range over, it would produce certain output. I'm going to leave this example now and I want to show you uh, a few other examples and we're going to see that in the next video and then we're going to go home. And uh, so this will just be a preview of what we have to work on. And what I want you, so what we're going to see is uh, some of this stuff down here. But what I want you to do over the next week is I want you to look through these files and understand them. So up through 10. And um, and then also you ga I gave you access to my Go training on Udemy. So spend a little time watching that Go training on Udemy. And just become more familiar with the language. So like take a half hour every day and just watch, you know what I'm talking about, my training on Udemy. So there's this learn how to code, Google's Golang programming. So just watch like a half hour of that every day between now and next week. And then also look through the code 0 through 10. Okay. Yeah.